This video was created for the Urban Riparian and Stream Restoration Program by Extension and Research Specialists with Texas A&M AgriLife and the Texas Water Resources Institute. Funding for this video was provided through a Clean Water Act Section 319H non-point source grant from the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. It is intended to help water professionals and members of the public interested in stream restoration to better understand how to conduct a cross-section survey of a creek or stream. A cross-section survey can help classify a stream. A stream's classification can, in turn, help determine if a restoration project is needed and how big a job, and how expensive, that might be. To conduct a cross-section survey, you will need a team of at least two people, a measurement taker and a note taker, a long measuring tape, a long measuring rod, a tripod, your surveying equipment, namely a level, and your recording forms, which can be found online. See link below for details. Your level can either be one of the regular levels that you look through, or a self-leveling laser level. Since the measurement taker will be in the stream, you need to bring the appropriate gear. This will likely include properly sized waders or waterproof boots, if your stream is shallow enough, at any site. Keep in mind you will be outside at your site for several hours. Depending on the time of year and your location, this could mean extreme temperatures, biting pests, venomous snakes, sun exposure, or other potential hazards. Be prepared to stay safe at your location. If your stream is too deep for the measurement taker to safely stand in or cross on foot, you may also need to bring a kayak or other small boat. Be careful whenever you are in or getting into or out of a stream. It is common for a measurement taker to slip and fall while doing a stream cross-section survey. The long measuring rod can unbalance them while in the water. Always keep safety in mind when doing a stream cross-section survey. When you get to your stream site, the first thing you want to think about is how many cross-sections you're going to take. If you are just wanting to classify your stream, a single cross-section taken at a riffle of the stream will be enough. The riffle is a section of the stream where there will be the greatest level of substrate diversity and the fastest, shallowest water. However, if you want to classify your stream for restoration projects, you will want to do a cross-section at each riffle, and pool in the reach you are assessing, as well as a few runs. Pools are characterized by deep depths and slow current, while runs are the smooth, unbroken sections connecting riffle and pool. Ideally, you want to set up your tripod and survey equipment at the highest point possible, where your note taker can see all the cross sections. The goal is for your note taker to be able to read every elevation point as the measurement taker goes across the stream. This can be difficult when there's lots of dense foliage at a site, or if the highest point is on the opposite bank. But if you can pick a good spot at the beginning and can avoid moving your equipment, things will be a lot easier. After you set up your level, the next step is to take your tape measure perpendicularly across the stream. Ideally, you want to measure from the top of the bank on one side to the top of the bank on the other side, if that's possible. But you at least want to make sure you're covering the bankful distance, bankful to bankful. Very generally, bankful is the area that floods every one to two years, but identifying it can be difficult. To get it right, it helps to look around at several different points along the stream. It's also good to have prior knowledge of your site or go out with somebody who does. Before you actually start the cross-section survey, you need to take a benchmark measurement. For our site in Seguin, we use the staircase. You want to do this to have a permanent reference point that's always going to be there and will most likely stay at the same distance and height. That way, you can refer to it just in case you need to do another cross-section or in case someone else is coming out to do measurements. After you take the benchmark measurement, you can begin your stream cross-section survey. Your goal is to get a detailed look at the contours of the stream bed by taking depth measurements at regular intervals. For most streams, one to two foot intervals will give good results without taking too long. But if you have a very wide stream, you might want to take larger intervals. At each interval, starting with the top of the bank, the measurement taker needs to place the measuring rod as close as possible to the actual stream bed. If there's lots of silt and it's really soft, you don't want to let it sink 
you just want to gently place it on the surface. If there is a boulder, you would want to go a little off to the side so you can actually see what the bottom is. At each interval, the note taker needs to read the elevation through the level and mark it down if they're using a regular level. Or listen for the beeps and record the measurement if they are using an automated laser level. As you go across your stream taking measurements, make sure to get some important landmarks along the way. The big ones are the thalweg, or the deepest part of the stream, the top bank, the bankful, and the edge of water points on both the left and right side of the stream. To determine the left or right side, face downstream. What is on your right is the right side of the bank, and what is on the left is the left side of the bank. After you take measurements all the way across your stream, you can then go on to your next site. Or, if you're just taking that one cross-section, you're done. Once you're done, you can enter your data into the calculation spreadsheet, linked below, to generate a stream profile. You can use that for classification or to calculate your discharge or your area of your stream bank, and that information is additionally useful. Your stream cross-section survey data is part of the whole information picture that can help classify a stream. That classification can in turn help guide a restoration project. For more information on conducting stream cross-section surveys or for help with analysis, please visit twri.tamu.edu backslash urban dash resources. Funding for this video was provided through a Clean Water Act Section 319H non-point source grant from the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency.